never stays a day A band that's always coming my way Good afternoon from New York. We're coming on the air with breaking news, very sad news to tell the sports world. The L.A. Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. The chopper reportedly went down just before 10 a.m. local time, according to fire, uh, the fire department out there in Calabasas, California. That's northwest of Los Angeles. You can see the picture there. It burst into flames on impact, starting a nearby brush fire. So much of the world is just in shock and disbelief, trying to process what has happened today and make some sense of this gigantic loss. Here's what we know right now, and even though it has been several hours, it is still stunning to say the words that Kobe Bryant, the legendary NBA star, is dead tonight. His adorable 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, known as GJ, also dead tonight. Seven other people, a, a baseball coach, a pilot, all dead. The helicopter they were traveling in crashed outside of Los Angeles. No word yet on why it crashed, but it went down and it caught fire on a hillside in Calabasas, California, about 30 miles outside of Los Angeles. At the time of recording this video, it is January 28th, 2022, which means the two year anniversary of the fateful helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven other people happened just the other day, January 26th, 2020. Now, of course, because of the two year anniversary, everything's been in the news again, but also because just recently, the other day, there was an artist who came out here and installed a statue of both Kobe Bryant and his daughter, Gianna, at the crash site. And that is where we're heading today. And the easiest way to get here is near a dog park at a trailhead known as Bark Park Trailhead. It's about 1.2 miles up to the crash site. A Kobe fan named Dan Medina honoring the NBA great placing a sculpture of Kobe and his daughter Gianna near the site of the helicopter crash in Calabasas two years ago. The beautiful artwork includes the names of all nine victims who perished in the crash along with Kobe and his daughter. I created a, a seven foot version of this design, exactly what you see here, but life size. And um, the ultimate goal was to have that installed somewhere in downtown LA. There's a lot of people here today at the dog park, so just so you guys know that if you start hearing dogs barking in the background, that's why. We don't have a pet. Jessica and I don't have any pets. We travel way too much. But today we're getting a little bit of exercise in, and we're going to head up to the crash site, take a look at what's there. From what I understand, almost immediately after the news broadcast happened, the artist came back and took the statue. Now, I did just confirm with a hiker that was coming down the trail that the statue is no longer there, that the artist did come and take it. But he did say that there is stuff still there that you can, when you get up to the crash site, you're going to know it immediately. There's flowers and pictures. Now, I don't know if I properly said this or not, but we are in Calabasas, California. It's absolutely beautiful up here. A lot of celebrities like the Kardashians live out here. It's crazy to think that something so tragic happened in such a beautiful place, but it does. So I'm just going to come right out and say this. There are two things in life that Jessica and I have absolutely zero interest in. The first one being politics, the second one being sports. With that being said, I'm going to tell you right now, I know absolutely nothing about Kobe Bryant's career. I'm not going to be talking about his career. No statistics, no games, no championships, and I'm not going to talk about anything that had to deal with legal battles back in the early 2000s. Instead, this is just walking history, walking up to the crash site to pay our respects to where Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, and seven other people tragically lost their lives in a helicopter crash. Now watching this, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the horror stories of living in LA, mainly the traffic, how something that should take 15 minutes could take an hour or two depending on the time of day. 
Now, Kobe Bryant and his life and his family was affected by this just like everybody else. And he started running into problems where because of practice and because of games, he was missing family activities and quality time. So him and his wife decided to do a lot of traveling around town by helicopter so he wouldn't miss those things. So instead of taking the highways and possibly being stuck for two hours, hop in a helicopter 15, 20 minutes later, you're there. The morning of the crash, there was so much fog in the area that even the Los Angeles Police Department wasn't even flying their helicopters. It was, it was that intense. But Kobe Bryant and everybody else on board had to get up to the Mamba Sports Academy for, I'm not sure if it was a game or if it was for practice, but in order to avoid Los Angeles traffic, they took the helicopter. Now it got so bad at one point that there's an article where they talk about you know, what happened. There was no black box on the helicopter, but there's an article that talks about that they circled the Los Angeles Zoo for quite some time because they couldn't see in front of them. And supposedly there was uh, a bunch of traffic up there, I guess airplanes or maybe another helicopter. And the air traffic control said, hey, we can't see you. You're flying too low on the radar. We can't see you at all. Uh, even though the fog was so intense, for whatever reason, they kept going. Now, I should also point out that the pilot, he was a very well-trained pilot, especially when it comes to flying in this kind of weather. So I'm sure everybody felt pretty secure. I mean, I don't know how, <laughs> uh, how I would do in that situation. If I'm on an airplane and we're hitting turbulence, man, I pee my pants a little bit. But they kept going. Maybe they just had to. There's no place to land. The wind is really starting to pick up up here the closer I get to the top of the mountain. Now, like I said, there was no black box on the helicopter, so they really don't know what happened. But it's speculated that the pilot at one point flew through a dense fog bank. I'm not sure what you want to call it fog cloud or just couldn't see and without realizing it and flying so low flew directly into the side of a mountain Not knowing much about Kobe Bryant, I wondered how he got the name, the nickname, the Black Mamba. And so I started doing some research on it. Now back in 2003, 2004, Kobe Bryant was involved in some pretty serious allegations. And I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, I just, I, got, I want to acknowledge it because I guarantee you at some point in the comments below, somebody's going to mention it. And whether I say it or not, I'm going to get some some slack but this is not that kind of video like I said this is about visiting where this tragedy took place but these serious allegations really affected Kobe Bryant and his family and rumor is at one point he was watching Quentin Tarantino's movie Kill Bill and in it uh, he came across the black mamba snake and it really intrigued him so he started doing some research on it and he realized wait a second this is me this is everything that i want to be on the basketball court so in an effort to separate his personal life and his professional life he started calling himself he gave himself the nickname the black mamba uh ruthless on the court i thought that was kind of cool Quentin Tarantino, see, affecting all walks of life, even sports. 
Before Jessica and I moved to California, while we were still living in Orlando, uh, we came out for a visit the first week of February in 2020, not too long after the crash. The crash again, January 26, 2020. So it was just like a week or two right after that. And I remember walking through downtown LA or even Hollywood and just seeing signs, RIP Kobe, everywhere, like on the marquees of theaters and everything like that. To this day, everywhere you drive in LA, I'm talking everywhere, there are murals of Kobe and Gianna uh, all over the place, on, on uh, walls, billboards, graffiti, in, in alleyways. It's everywhere. Like, LA lives and breathes the memory of Kobe Bryant. Now, right around this little bend in this little alcove this is where the helicopter crashed. Whew. That's heavy. It's strange because it's so peaceful up here. And the hike, even though it was a little over a mile, it really wasn't that bad. But I can only imagine the effort, like what had to happen in order to come up here to retrieve the bodies, as well as the wreckage of the, the helicopter. Let's get a little closer. And like I said, the statue is no longer here. But right up here, you see this little white rose and this indent? That's where the statue was. It wasn't very big. And I remember thinking when I saw the news article that there's no way in heck that the city of Calabasas is going to allow that to stay there. Either that or somebody's gonna steal it because it was, it's, it was tiny. You can see that's the base right there. Pretty wild, right? I mean, anything like this, when it happens, it hits you. And what's this hat say? 8-2-24, RIP Kobe in Gigi with the date 1-26-22. So they came out here on the actual anniversary. Legends never die. Miss you from Jojo Jesse. Now you see that peak in about the center of your screen? About 30 miles down that way is a Thousand Oaks where the Mamba Sports Academy was, where they were heading. And like I said, the, the fog was pretty freaking intense. I'm talking like, seriously, you couldn't see anything. And again, no black box on the helicopter, but it is believed that at some point in flight, they got turned around. They got, um, I don't say confused, but their direction, their point of direction, got a little whacked out. And instead of going the way that they were supposed to be going, they started flying the helicopter towards where I'm standing right now, not knowing that there was a 
a mountain right in front of them in the middle of all the fog. Now as beautiful as it is up here on the trail and in the mountain, there's really no landmarks that you can use to pinpoint where the, the crash site actually is. But there were a bunch of photos that were taken that day. Some photos we're not gonna talk about, obviously. You see that, that dirt path, how it zigzags? You can see that dirt path and this little alcove in the photos. The crash actually hit the, the mountain and kind of obviously rolled down a little bit, almost covering the path. You can see a bunch of debris on it. What's really messed up is they were so close to clearing the top of the mountain here, but because of the fog, they couldn't see it. They had no idea that there was a mountain in front of them until it was too late. Because of what we do, we get a lot of requests to do filming locations or famous graves or murder sites. But believe it or not, the crash site of Kobe Bryant is our most requested site here in California. Uh, we get it at least five to 10 times a week, whether it's in comments on previous videos or emails directly. Now, the man wasn't perfect. None of us are. He just lived a pretty extraordinary life and he died in a very tragic way with his daughter. I was only 13 years old. Now, I remember reading somewhere, I don't know how true this is, but supposedly whenever Kobe and his wife decided to buy a helicopter and travel via helicopter, that they made a pact that at any given time, there would only be one of them, one parent in the helicopter. Um, never both of them in at the same time for reasons like this, I'm guessing.